the far greater numbers of people who are being incarcerated for parole violations are people that are being incarcerated for technical violations, for not showing up regularly at the parole office, for not going to their treatment. By going through the simulation, someone in the community can get a little bit of a realization for the challenges and the obstacles that face people as they're trying to navigate through the system. It's a great opportunity to, to introduce the reentry simulation as wide as we can. I think the more people understand just how difficult it is when a returning citizen is trying to meet our requirements, it just helps us to be empathetic about the needs and can help them be successful in reentering our communities. The standard exercise consists of 13 stations representing the places a returning citizen must navigate in order to be successful. You can craft the stations to your specific area, but examples include identification, probation, super center and bank, court, employment, a GED program and career center, social services, a church and food bank, quick loan and pawn shop, transit and rent, health clinic, treatment and counseling, and a plasma bank. The participants receive a life card that contains an identity including a criminal background, current living condition, current job situation, and the order in which the tasks must be accomplished each week. 99% of the people who are incarcerated across the country are coming home. They're gonna be our neighbors. Their children are gonna be in school with our children. And if we don't prepare them for coming out and becoming productive citizens, then the community loses out as well. You need the cooperation and the support of the management team at the U.S. Attorney's Office. That's foremost, because you're gonna need resources like materials from the U.S. Attorney's Office. You need office volunteers to participate as well. You need a whole network of people working together to have a successful reentry simulation. Make sure you check and mark life cards at the end of each week. A check mark on the life card represents a positive interaction or completion of tasks, and an X represents a negative interaction or signifies a failure to complete. These exercises with the community are critical to getting the buy-in of the people who may be interacting with a re-entered citizen in an, any number of ways. What I wanted you to do is really get a visual for where everybody's ended up this, during this simulation. We got our homeless shelter over here. That's a pretty significant number of people who are homeless. Halfway house, a little bit smaller. Our jail represents the true statistics, which are that 70% of individuals that are released are rearrested in the first three years. And no matter how many times we do this simulation with a smaller group like you all, a larger group, the statistics always play out that 70% of our individuals are back in jail. We have quite a few returning citizens that are sitting at these tables. Without them, we truly would not be able to do this. If you have questions for them about what they've walked through, we'll be happy to answer any of that. The things that you realized here today, you, many of you are in positions that you can actually affect those things. And you're, you're reducing some hurdles if we can figure out cheap, effective ways of impacting recidivism that doesn't really take much effort. I think it's really important for people to think that this just isn't a three or five year problem. This is a lifetime problem for many individuals. It was a great experience. It was an educational experience and it, uh, it was a really hands-on experience. I think it would certainly make me more cognizant of uh, things that may be taken for granted uh, in court and make uh, judicial officers and others that are participating in the court process more aware of what is actually taking place after the court processes. You have your life card here. It tells you where to go for treatment during week one, or yet if you have to do treatment for week one, it'll be empty. It's got a black box there, you don't have to worry about it for that week. There's no order to this. It's for you to determine what order do I want to go, what's most important. We have found that the best way to do it in the prison is to have the population take ownership of the simulation themselves. There's much more buy-in from a population if inmates that have credibility are running it and are manning it. And in fact, a lot of the scenarios that are in the simulation are ones that were actually given to us by inmates across the state who actually experienced it. Folks are returning to the community 
and they experience these obstacles and barriers on a day-to-day -day basis and return due to these obstacles and barriers. Even more important is holding simulations inside the prisons in order to give those who are about to rejoin society a realistic glimpse into what challenges await them on the outside. I volunteered to be a monitor and do the program because I believe in it. I believe in re-entry. I believe that as a guy that's been locked up now 19 years, that it's gonna benefit me. I need to know how to navigate through life. Uh, I need to know the frustrations that's gonna come. It's so important that we educate people, give them the necessary tools to be successful because these these guys are going out to be somebody's neighbor. I think that the uh, re-entry simulation process is very beneficial because I didn't realize there was gonna be so many hurdles excuse me, that I had to cross. At every step of the way, I was reminded of how frustrating it can be or how I may not have the resources in, in order to get to the next place I need to be. Week one, um, I went and got my ID, first and foremost. I had 20 bucks to my name. So it cost me 15 bucks to get my ID. It left me five bucks, so I figured I'd probably better do my year analysis. And I went and done it, it cost me another five bucks. So that left me with zero dollars. I went to the bank and lost another bus pass. Now I'm left with none of those. And I didn't pass my year analysis. So uh, it was a pretty bad week. I think it was beneficial because it's preparing me now to start thinking about things I need to start getting in line. At the end of the session, we did a question and answer session with the guys, and a lot of them said it was eye-opening. Only way you're gonna change what people do when you change what they know. One of the guys asked, how many guys wanna come back to jail? Nobody raised their hand. So what's wrong, what's wrong? Why are they coming back to jail if they don't want to? It's important for people to understand that public safety has a reentry component and we need to knock down those hurdles and barriers in our communities right now that are out there that we can help these people come back into our communities and successfully re-enter. My advice would be don't be intimidated. It looks like a large undertaking and it can be, but it becomes simpler the more that you conduct and the benefits outweigh any challenges. So I can't wait till the gates open for me to, to uh, start getting my ducks in a row and, I, and maybe get my ID, social security card, birth certificate, and things like that in order because if I wait till the last minute, then I feel like the potential to fail is, is, is higher. A lot of the things that I haven't been thinking about, I'm gonna start thinking about after today uh, as, as I'm getting closer to parole. Investment in reentry is a proven method for reducing the recidivism rate and keeping our communities safer. I'm United States Attorney Bill Powell in the Northern District of West Virginia. For many years, the Department of Justice has successfully executed reentry programs that have significantly reduced the recidivism rate. One such program is a reentry simulation, which my district conducts on a regular basis with great results. The simulation is a useful tool for preparing people who are incarcerated for the challenges that they will face once they are released. But it's also an eye-opening experience for members of the community from judges, probation officers, and law enforcement, to employers, students, and clergy, anyone who could ultimately support the success of a re-entering citizen. I urge you to conduct this valuable exercise in your district.